We worked with some of the best MDI players in the game from Echo and Method to make an epic healer list for Mythic Plus. We will be giving every healing spec two separate rankings. The first will be a healing score based on sustained, burst, and spot healing potential. Then we will give everyone an accessory score, ranking utility, defensives, and damage. Finally, we will be giving some advice on what healers perform better in lower keys. And we will tell you what spec MDI players think might actually be sleeper OP for Season 2. First up, let's explain our rankings. Our healing score will be a combination of sustained, burst, and spot healing. Sustained healing depends on how well a healer can efficiently deal with continuous sources of damage across the entire group for prolonged periods of time. On the flip side, burst healing involves being able to quickly recover multiple health bars that have suddenly dropped critically low, usually from any mechanics that deal heavy AoE damage. Spot healing involves being able to quickly recover a single player's HP in a pinch, which also includes healing tanks anytime they take spiky damage. Our second score is based on the non-healing capabilities of each spec, including utility, defensives, and damage. Utility is how well a healer can assist their party with mob control or external buffs. Generally speaking, this is valued highly by top-level players grinding the leaderboards. The survivability and defensive score is based on not only how well healers can keep themselves alive through large sources of damage, but also in the ability to provide damage reduction to their group. Finally, damage should be self-explanatory, but as we know, healers in this day and age are required to do a lot more than just healing, and being able to pad the meters is definitely valuable in Season 2. First up, we have our top three healers, representing the high tiers of the Mythic Plus meta. Kicking things off, we have Holy Paladin, which is the highest ranking healer on our list, despite relatively lower levels of representation across the board. On the healing side of things, Paladins excel in their ability to quickly top multiple health bars, using Beacon of Virtue with Divine Toll to power through difficult AoE pressure. During Avenging Wrath, these two spells can instantly top the entire group, and even when Divine Toll is on cooldown, Holy Prism helps fill out any voids for multi-target healing. With a huge modifier coming from the Season 2 set bonuses, this spell has gained enormous value and has helped propel Holy Paladins to the number one spot on our list. Sustained healing isn't exactly the strong suit for Holy Paladins and can feel a bit reliant on Divine Purpose and Awakening procs, but in a meta where every other healer struggles with spot healing, Paladins are in a league of their own. Taken together, we are giving Paladins a total healing score of 28 for Mythic Plus. Of course, healers are expected to do more than just top health bars, and Holy Pallies are stacked with utility. As a healer with a low cooldown interrupt, a stun, and AoE CC, Holy Paladins bring a ton of mob control to any group. While they might be lacking a snare effect, this gap is easily filled by other group members. Holy Pallies also offer multiple tools for dealing with the toughest debuffs in Season 2, including having a poison and disease dispel, combined with Blessing of Protection, which provides coverage against any physical debuffs, which is especially useful into some fixate mechanics. As far as survivability is concerned, Holy Paladins are the tankiest healer in the game. Most people would probably assume this is due to Bubble, which is only half of the story. What people tend to ignore is their passive tankiness as a plate-wearing healer that also wears a shield, which alongside Sanctified Plates gives Paladins enormous physical damage mitigation, higher stamina, and passive avoidance. And with the ability to play Dwarf, aka the most Giga-Chad race in all of Mythic Plus, Paladins are well-suited for this season's dungeons. While Holy Paladins themselves might not do exceptionally high DPS, the ability to buff group damage while providing cooldown reduction is immensely powerful. Buffs like Bloodlust or Power Infusion often take the spotlight, but Blessing of Summer and Blessing of Autumn should never be overlooked. Overall, we're giving Holy Paladins a total accessory score of 27 due to the sheer amount of value they offer to groups. The main strength of Pallies in Season 2 is that they are jack of all trades, with tons of unique utility options that allow them to fit in with virtually any group. This, alongside their durability, makes them a really safe pick in the meta, and might help explain why Paladin is well represented on the highest end of the ladder. The only noticeable weaknesses are obviously their damage output, which by itself is relatively low. On top of this, Paladins can struggle a bit with mana and really need to pre-plan drinks throughout each run. But with a healing score of 28 and an accessory score of 27, Holy Paladins have shaped up to be the absolute strongest healer in the Season 2 meta, and you should definitely see more of them in the near future. Next up, we have Preservation of Ochre, which is the only healer in true striking range of Holy Paladin. This might come as a surprise, considering Evoker isn't exceptionally popular across all key levels, so let's break it down. Sustained healing is where Evoker truly shines, with some of the best group-wide healing options in the entire game. The bread and butter combo for Evoker healing is Echo and Dream Breath, providing upfront spot healing combined with a duplicated healing over time effect. 
When this combo is used with Temporal Anomaly, it's possible to get Dream Breath duplicated across the entire group. Preservation also excels in Burst Healing, where it is very comparable to Holy Paladin. With strong AoE healing spells like Emerald Communion and Rewind, and with the ability to store Dream Breaths with Stasis, Evokers have multiple ways to navigate pressure points during runs. While Pallies might be more efficient with their cooldowns, the sheer diversity of Evokers' Burst Healing options gives them a very high score. The only weak point for preservation is in the ability to spot heal, but outside of this, Evoker ranks second highest in our healing score for Season 2. Moving on to utility, preservation is also a jack of all trades. With an interrupt, knock up, knock back, root, and an AoE stun, Evoker has tons of options for mob control. Layered on top of this CC is Oppressing Roar, which adds a layer of synergy with other AoE stuns, and with an optional talent, can even act as an AoE Enrage Dispel. Preservation is also the only healer with a low cooldown bleed removal, which conveniently removes poisons and diseases as well. And finally, we shouldn't forget that Evokers even have Bloodlust, so yeah, we weren't kidding when we said they are a jack of all trades. As far as survivability and external defensives are concerned, evokers are better than many people think. On the survivability end, preservation comes equipped with two charges of obsidian scales to deal with large sources of damage, while having renewing blaze to deal with smaller rolling damage. It's also important to note that preservation evokers will passively heal themselves with every dream breath, since the conical effect will always hit the evoker. So unlike other healers that might be forced to budget some globals to keep themselves alive, evokers can do so passively. The only place where preservation can feel a bit lacking is in single target damage. Disintegrate costs a heavy amount of essence, which is better budgeted for healing. With that said, evokers are exceptionally good at dealing AoE damage through the combination of fire breath and deep breath, making them great for padding on large pulls. Overall, we're giving preservation a total accessory score of 24, which is on the upper end of most healers. While evokers might not be at the level of Holy Paladin, they're still really comparable. The strengths of evoker include its sustained healing output combined with highly unique utility options, which make a great fit for many dungeon groups. The main drawback of the spec is the nature of its healing output, which requires everyone in the group to position well to get hit by Dream Breath. If DPS ignore this limitation, it can make healing needlessly stressful, but with a combined score of 49, Evokers land in the number 2 spot on our healer rankings. Trailing close behind is Restoration Shaman, which might be confusing to some viewers. Just looking at representation alone, it would appear that Shaman should be ranked higher, since it outnumbers both Paladin and Evoker. However, this data can be a bit deceiving. For one, Shamans were obviously one of the best healers last season, making them exceptionally popular, which might have spilled over into 10.1. Shaman is definitely still strong, but is currently outclassed by Paladin and Evoker in higher keys. The main reason for this is the fact that Resto Shamans can struggle with healing output. As far as sustained healing is concerned, Shamans can cover a lot of bases thanks to the amount of cleave healing provided by Cloudburst Totem and Chain Heal. Their burst healing is moderately strong, as the combination of Ancestral Guidance and Ascendance provides huge healing output. Outside of these two cooldowns, however, shamans can struggle with repeated damage waves. The main drawback with Resto Shaman healing is how long it can take to ramp. While Paladins can slam Beacon and Divine Toll to top the whole group in two globals, Restoration Shamans are forced to gradually build up healing to essentially do the same thing. So in order to heal higher keys, Shamans need to be a bit more proactive with healing, which can present a difficult learning curve. With that said, Restoration Shaman truly shines with all of the non-healing tasks. On the utility side, they offer a lot of mob control, including a ranged kick with a short cooldown, a knockup effect, an AoE stun, roots, snares, and hex for extended CC. As far as group-wide utility is concerned, Shamans come equipped with Bloodlust, of course, but also Poison Cleansing Totem, which continues to be incredibly useful this season. And finally, even though it is very niche, Earth Elemental can also come in handy in case the tank ever dies. As far as survivability and defensives are concerned, Shamans can be quite bulky. Wearing mail armor and equipping a shield means an added level of protection against physical damage. If that isn't enough, Shamans have one of the best personal damage reductions in the game with Astral Shift, and can even avoid some lethal hits by camping Ghost Wolf to stack up DR. And while Shaman might lack a complete immunity, the ability to play as a dwarf is massively beneficial this season, especially in higher keys. Moving on to damage, this is where Shamans tend to shine. Passively, Shamans can deal respectable single target and AoE damage thanks to Lava Surge, Prox, and Acid Rain. These two mechanics are less intrusive compared to damage sources from other healers, allowing Shamans to effortlessly contribute to the scoreboard. When more serious damage is needed, Stormkeeper is great to help with AoE pulls, as the resulting Chain Lightning can pack quite a punch. In lower keys, Shamans have more flexibility when dealing damage, as there is less to heal. This is precisely why they are less common on the leaderboard, as the increased damage levels can make it more difficult to benefit from their 
damage toolkit. In any case, Restoration Shamans have a very respectable accessory score compared to other healers. As we just mentioned, the main strength of Shaman is their ability to assist with damage and mob control. When healing is not needed, Shamans are the most powerful healer and can easily carry the momentum of their group. Of course, their main drawback is overall healing output, which is definitely felt at higher keys. But with a total score of 45, Resto Shamans are a fantastic choice for Season 2. As a quick recap, right now Paladin, Evoker, and Shaman represent the current high tiers for Mythic Plus healing. Next up, we have our mid-tier healers, which are all highly competitive. Kicking things off is Restoration Druid, who definitely excel in sustained healing. Just like Preservation of Ochre, Druids have no problem padding any sort of group-wide rot damage thanks to their healing over time based throughput. Also like Evoker, a huge part of Druid healing requires group members to stay stacked in order to benefit from efflorescence and verdancy. So if you're playing with a Druid on your team, be sure to stay in the green. Unfortunately, Druids can struggle with both burst and spot healing. This is due to the fact that their healing output needs to ramp up. Unlike Holy Paladins who can slam two globals and top their whole team, Resto Druids need to have HOTS rolling on the entire group in order to min-max flourish and even Tranquility, which needs the scaling effect of Mastery to be truly effective. Taken together, this can make Resto Druids somewhat challenging to play at higher keys, requiring players to be more proactive with their healing globals and plan ahead for bigger damage waves. When it comes to utility, Druids have a few unique options like Vortex, an AoE incap, and Stampeding Roar. While all of this mob control can be helpful, Druids still lack a reliable kick, making them a bit less practical compared to our high tiers. Although it may seem minor, Mark of the Wild is a huge selling point for Resto Druids, but with the popularity of Balance and Guardian, it is often provided by other roles. As far as survivability and defensives are concerned, Resto Druid is better than most people think. Even though Iron Bark might not be the best external, and while Bark Skin might seem weak on paper, let's not forget that Resto Druids have one of the most efficient defensive tools in the entire game, Bear Form. The passive tankiness this spell provides cannot be underestimated and is great for surviving those pesky one-shot mechanics that would otherwise require an entire cooldown. When it comes to damage, Resto Druids are currently lagging behind. Luckily, this could change in the next patch, with a pretty substantial damage buff across the board. Right now, Druids are able to pad details with Nature's Vigil, though it needs to be paired with Flourish in order to be most effective. As a healer, this form of damage dealing is relatively convenient since it is mostly passive. Unfortunately, outside of Vigil, it can be hard for Druids to do much damage, especially on single targets where Cat Form can feel a bit clunky weaving in and out of melee range as a healer. Overall, the strength of Resto Druid lies in sustained healing output and being able to keep everyone alive through smaller rolling sources of damage. We should also mention that Druids are able to benefit a lot from Shadow Meld, being able to apply HOTS, then sit down for drinks, which can help eliminate any downtime during runs. The main weakness of Druid are its fairly limited and niche utility options combined with weaker damage output. With a total score of 41, Druids are a few points away from Resto Shamans and are a true middle of the pack healer. The same can be said for Disciplined Priest, who are next up on the mid-tiers. Ranking sustained healing is a bit difficult since atonement output depends on how many targets the priest is able to actually hit. During Shadow, Covenant, and Schism windows, Dis can pump out a ton of healing assuming there are multiple targets to attack. On the flip side, this means there can be a lot of downtime with Disc Priest's output, especially considering the longer cooldown on Radiance. This means in order to burst heal, Priests really need to pre-plan their Schism windows to line up with big damage swings. Spot healing can be slightly tricky for Disc as well, but is quite powerful when executed well. Power Word Life is exceptionally good for quickly bringing up someone's HP, assuming it is pressed at the right time. If not, then it becomes nothing more than a weak flash heal. Penance is also quite powerful as a friendly spot heal, but is also great for AoE sustained healing when used for damage, which again can make it a bit clunky to use. In any case, with a total healing score of 20, Priests are also in the middle of the pack. Just like Resto Druid, Priest utility is quite unique, but can feel a bit limited due to the lack of an interrupt. This means that most mob control has to come from fear, and sometimes even shackle in niche situations. With that said, Mind Soothe, Mass Dispel, and Power Infusion are arguably some of the best utility spells for Mythic Plus, making Disc a very high value addition to any group without a Shadow Priest. When it comes to survivability and defensives, Disc Priest can be a bit of a mixed bag, having great external damage reduction tools at the cost of weak personals. As far as external DR is concerned, Disc Priests are almost unbeatable, with two charges of Pain Suppression and Power Word Barrier, giving them multiple ways to deal with pressure points throughout each run. 
Personal defensives are where Disc tends to suffer. With the exception of Angelic Bulwark, priests need to be very proactive in order to avoid lethal damage. To stay alive through bigger damage sources, priests need to preemptively fade, shield, desperate prayer, and even flash shield in order to build up damage reduction. Not exactly ideal when a resto druid can do the same by just pressing bear form. But unlike druid, priests can actually pack a punch, with very high and consistent damage. While other healers have to budget globals for doing DPS, priests are able to double dip both healing and damage thanks to atonement. And with multiple sources of damage, both single target and AoE, Disc Priest is almost like a pseudo DPS class at times, which is why we're giving it a high score in this area. The strength of Disc Priest is largely tied to the externals it can provide to the group. Whether it's power infusion or pain suppression, priests help dictate tempo. And with Mass Dispel, Disc Priest is able to navigate some unique pressure points that would otherwise overwhelm other healers. The main drawback of Priest is mob control. Without a stun or interrupt, Disc needs to get carried by their group in higher keys. But with a good showing across the board, we're giving Disc Priest a total score of 41, putting them on par with Resto Druid. Rounding out the mid-tier healers is Mistweaver Monk, who score very high on sustained healing. As long as monks are able to have high uptime on ancient teachings, and if renewing mist is maintained on targets taking damage, then Mistweavers should have no problem padding the meters during lower amounts of damage. The place where monks tend to struggle the most is with burst healing. The relatively long cooldown of revival, coupled with its underwhelming healing output, can make it very tricky to keep the group alive through heavy amounts of damage. Outside of Revival, Mistweaver is heavily reliant on Chi G windows in order to burst heal efficiently, and once Shaylun's Gift is stacked high enough, it is also a great AoE burst heal or single target spot heal. The main healing difficulties when playing Mistweaver is being able to keep the group alive while these spells are on cooldown. What monks might lack in burst healing, they can easily make up for in utility, where they have some of the best mob control out of any healer, including an incapacitate, ring of peace, an AoE stun, and let's not forget, an interrupt. On top of all this mob control, monks offer a 5% physical damage increase for their whole group. While this might not seem like much on paper, it has an enormous multiplying effect when paired with other damage modifiers. Survivability and defensives is where monk can fall a bit behind. Although Mistweaver boasts an impressive amount of personal defensive cooldowns through dampen harm, Use magic and fortifying brew, the long and disjointed CD of these effects makes them less reliable compared to more efficient personals. And while Life Cocoon does offer some immediate damage absorption, its shield can quickly get consumed in higher keys, making it feel more like a power word shield. When it comes to damage, Mistweaver is almost unmatched anytime melee AoE is possible. During Feline Stomp, monks are able to cleave multiple targets, dramatically boosting their damage and healing thanks to ancient teachings. As long as the group can keep mobs in one place and monks are able to spin to win, then Mistweaver can definitely pump. With that in mind, monk damage can suffer in some single target situations, especially when melee attacking isn't possible, which is why we've given a respectable score of 8 for damage output. If you want to have high impact on your keys, then Mistweaver Monk might be for you. With tons of unique options in terms of mob control, Mistweaver definitely has value for any group. While there might be some struggles with burst healing or sometimes even mana management, Mistweaver Monk scores about the same as both Resto Druid and Disc Priest to round out our high tiers. Barely missing the cut for mid-tier is Holy Priest, who is our lowest scoring healer overall. On the sustained healing side of things, Holy is actually quite strong this tier thanks to the set bonuses that buff Prayer of Mending and simply due to their mastery, which helps pad out low levels of damage. Burst healing for Holy Priest isn't necessarily bad, but can feel a bit limited due to the long baseline cooldown of Guardian Spirit and Divine Hymn. With that said, spot healing is where Holy Priest shine the most. Being able to top people in a pinch with Serenity, Instant Cast, Flash, Heal, Procs, and Power Word Life. When it comes to utility and personal defensives, Holy Priest has a lot of overlap with Discipline, offering powerful tools like Power Infusion to help with tempo, but being fairly squishy, especially when it comes to physical damage. Damage is historically where Holy Priests have suffered the most, but with recent buffs to multiple damaging abilities, players should be more optimistic on the offensive side of Holy Priest. Holy Priest might be the weakest healer overall, but remember, with a total score of 38, it's only 2 points below our current mid-tiers, so with every healer covered, let's recap. Before we do, we have one huge disclaimer. We don't want our rankings to deter anyone from playing a healer they enjoy. We made a list simply as a benchmark for how healers are currently performing in higher keys. Holy Paladin, Preservation of Ochre, and Restoration Shaman are our highest ranking healers, with Druid, Disc Priest, and Mistweaver Monk trailing right below, and finally Holy Priest lagging behind slightly. Our highest ranking healers are the ones you will typically see on leaderboards, but any healer in the game is definitely capable of pushing higher keys, just with a few more obstacles. 
Holy Paladin and Preservation of Ochre are definitely the better two healers at higher ratings thanks to their high utility combined with great healing output. Resto Shamans, on the other hand, are damage monsters and get more DPS value in lower keys where fights are shorter and where there are less healing problems. Finally, some MDI healers currently think Mistweaver Monk might actually be Sleeper OP. Don't let its low representation fool you, monks are definitely capable of pushing this season. Before we wrap things up, we want to hear from you. We're currently working alongside some of the best players in the world to develop high quality guides for Mythic Plus. With that in mind, what topics would you like us to cover next? Do you have any specific pain points you would like help with? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.